Ladies and gentlemen, on the Shred Gaming Twitter.com video, we're going to be discussing a blog post from NVIDIA, which is dealing with do's and don'ts on NVIDIA's current Maxwell architecture. Now, the reason this is really interesting is because some of this actually confirms what both AMD and other developers have said in regards to how Maxwell handles asynchronous compute, but we'll get into that in just a second. I do want to say thank you to the person who actually brought this to my attention. His name's Ryan on Facebook, on Red Gaming Tech Facebook. Uh, so shout outs to him. I actually completely miss this. A lot of people miss this, but it's actually a really interesting read. So just to get you up to speed, I'm sure many of you are aware of this whole situation, but just in case you're not, to apprise you of it, with Ashes of the Singularity, when it, when it was released, everyone jumped on it and everyone kind of looked at the benchmarks and it was fairly obvious that NVIDIA were behind AMD which was rather surprising considering that many suspected that it would be the reverse but Maxwell's architecture just didn't lend itself so well to the workload that um, Ashes were putting the GPU through and after some investigations and some allegations between all the developers it turned out rather simple it just was the Ashes of the Singularity was just better uh, for AMD hardware. It was quite that simple. It wasn't, you know, any conspiracy theory, but we continue to do investigations and Robert Halleck from AMD actually told us that Maxwell cannot perform asynchronous compute without heavy reliance on slow context switching. Then this was backed up by other developers, um, including David Cantor from... Um, Tech report, he actually said after discussing things with Oculus Rift employees that preemption context switching was potentially, and I quote, catastrophic for Maxwell. Now, the real reason, at least according to AMD and indeed even my own investigations, that their hardware, the GCN architecture, is doing so well, at least with asynchronous stuff, is because of the ACES, which are the asynchronous compute engines or command engines, depending how you want to. Um, go with it. But anyway, the, in a very basic nutshell, they allow the GPU to process and execute multiple command streams in parallel. In other words, they can dictate workloads on the various shaders of the GPU. So, for example, you might have 1024 shaders, 2048, obviously, what have you, depending on the workload. And sometimes you'll get graphical, you'll get bubbles within that pipeline. So, in other words, no work is being done. So, what they can do is either put a graphic workload or the GPU rather can either put graphical workloads in those bubbles or it can put uh, compute workloads in those bubbles so it could be anything from physics all the way down to lighting commands all the way down to post-processing whatever it can do that now what's really interesting is moving back to the NVIDIA side of things under pipeline state objects PSOs if you prefer they say and I quote don't toggle between compute and graphics on the same command queue more than absolutely necessary, and this is still a heavyweight switch to make. Mosey on down the list, they also say, and I quote NVIDIA as well, NVIDIA's developers warn as follows, and I quote, check carefully if the use of separate command queues really is advantageous, even for compute tasks that can in theory run in parallel with graphics tasks, the actual scheduling details of the parallel work on the GPU may not generate the results you hoped for. Be conscious of which asynchronous compute and graphics workloads can be scheduled together. And they also say use hardware conser conservative, excuse me, conservative raster for full, uh, for full, full speed conservative rasterization. And no use for use of GS to implement a slow software based con uh, conservative rasterization, see blah. Uh, and various other bits and bobs, including fast shade, uh, geometry shader features, render to cubes, all of that, which I'm not going to bother to read out. New effect, don't use raster order view techniques pervasively. Guaranteeing order doesn't come for free. And always compare with alternative approaches like approach blending, ops, and atomics. Now, the reason this is rather interesting is because it actually, I guess you could say, pretty much tells developers that to really utilize DirectX 12, to really utilize compute on uh, their hardware, you have to program it very specifically. I wouldn't say it's, I mean, 
some would say it's their way or the highway and I don't want to go in that I, I don't want to be that I don't want to accuse in that respect but it kind of is in many respects and I said respects a lot of times there but anyway I think you get the point it really it's it's really down to the fact that the Maxwell architecture wasn't made for this in mind whereas AMD kind of foresaw this now part of this reason is probably because of Mantle and it actually steered AMD in a rather great direction for them plus of course we know that their technology their GCN architecture is being used for the PlayStation 4 the Xbox one and so on and so forth which means that certain games are already using that on console we know this it's been documented that we've seen games already utilizing these uh, these techniques on the PlayStation 4 we don't know about the Xbox one but the PS4 Battlefield 4 is using it uh, infamous second sons using it uh, mantle on the PC certain games are already using it like thief so asynchronous compute asynchronous shaders are already a thing and we know of course they're eventually going to become a big deal for virtual reality because that just makes sense um, for example it could be utilized for reducing uh, reducing latency it could be for um, image warping because we know about you know depending on the perspective and all of that stuff uh, global illumination just various bits and pieces which are going to be very integral to the virtual reality experience and reducing the latency which can be immersion breaking with virtual reality now I just want to be clear this doesn't mean that Nvidia's GPU suck or anything like that but it does mean that unless developers take these things into consideration DirectX 12 performance with specific workloads is definitely going to be less than optimal on Nvidia's hardware. We've kind of known this stuff anyway, but it's rather interesting that eventually Nvidia's not directly confirmed it, but you know, pretty much directly confirmed it. There have been mutterings about their hardware before and they have made some concessions regarding this, but a lot of these conversations have somewhat fallen by the wayside now obviously AMD have been rather boastful about it however they have admitted that no GPU at the moment is fully DirectX 12 compatible it just is what it is the GPUs were not built with that much um, foresight in mind at the end of the day DirectX 12 is still being put together now so they couldn't have you know released a GPU back in 2000 and whatever it was with that in mind. I mean for the love of God the 17 the 7000 series the HD 7000 series known as the Southern Island uh, GPU that was released way way back in December 2011 so it well actually it was announced back then it was, didn't debut until January the 9th but still it wasn't like the GPU suddenly materialized it had been taped out and they've been developing it for some time so you know Theoretically, the actual specifications have been, you know, pretty much solid for a good year. And at the end of the day, although there have been some tweaks and improvements, for example, additional ACs put in, a better color compression, and other bits and bobs, the standard architecture of GCN is still the same as it always has been. And Nvidia, same deal. Maxwell was not designed with the fully DirectX 12 compatible. So this is just an interesting little, a little tidbit. Now. For the future, things are going to be completely different when AMD released their next generation GPUs, when Nvidia released their next generation GPUs. I'm sure most of the stuff will be ironed out because at the end of the day, the GPU will coincide with the full release of DirectX 12. And this, this whole situation, by the way, just for those who are kind of new to PC gaming or PC hardware, it's not new. Um, we've seen it with DirectX 11, we've seen it with DirectX 10, uh, I believe in even DirectX 9. I mean, back in the day when the um, X800s, I think it was, were competing with NVIDIA's G GeForce uh, 6000 series, there was a lot of problems because, for example, um, it had an op a OpenGL support of 2.0 and a DirectX um, shader model of 2.0 also however nvidia's did have a higher shader model support so certain games in the future either didn't look as good as in on amd's hardware or ati back in the day or they simply wouldn't run 
which is just kind of how it was. However, arguably, it didn't matter too much because by the time Shader Model 3 games became normal, you know, the GPU was kind of out of date. So this this whole new DirectX 11 or new, oh, new API has been released and not all graphics can't support it is kind of part and parcel in the usual... Um, the usual wars, I guess you could say. It is kind of normal, but it is rather interesting that this stuff has popped up, and I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of liking it personally because it is just one of those situations in tech which, you know, if you were to have looked at or thought of this, or you couldn't afford of this when Maxwell was first released, and everyone was looking at the benchmarks. It's just kind of funny how technology and software can kind of work and conspire against you and just the, the march of the industry. NVIDIA just didn't really think compute orientated when they designed Maxwell. It is what it is. And it's not that they were necessarily wrong to do it that way because what they did is they developed a product that was powerful, it required little energy, it put out a little heat and they instead used that die space for other things. It's not that they designed the product wrong inherently or they went in a wrong direction they went right for the time but it just shows you that the march or the, the the beat of the drums don't really stop for anyone and at the end of the day the industry were moving towards a low level api and amd just happened to foresee that but once again even they of course they do have certain uh, aspects of direct hits 12 that they just do not support so it just kind of is what it is but kind of an interesting little scenario we've got going on. Hopefully by next year, of course, all of this stuff won't mean a damn thing for most gamers. If you're someone who routinely upgrades by early next year, actually, I'll tell a lie, that's completely rubbish. Not early next year, but mid next year, we're going to have new GPUs which are going to be released, which are just going to dwarf the performance of these current GPUs, unless you've got like a really high-end 980 tie or something similar and you're comparing it like a mid-range, whatever the hell it's gonna end up being called, then of course, yes, your current GPU is probably gonna be faster, but you know, a mid to high end GPU of next year is probably gonna dwarf what we've got now, simply because of the technologies which are coming out. And I don't just mean, you know, shader models, correct text functionality, I just mean in terms of raw performance, the sheer number of shaders, the reduction in uh, manufacturing process, in other words, of course, we're dropping to 16 nm most likely. Uh, we're going to be. Um, there are some rumours it's still going to be 14 nm, but I'm thinking 16 personally. We're going to be seeing introductions of high bandwidth memory too. We're going to be seeing ridiculous amounts of bandwidth across the whole board, and it's it's just going to be absolutely crazy with the next generation CPUs and all of that stuff. So yeah, I think next year is just going to be really powerful, but this year. This year is going to be instrumental because it's going to mean that we're going to get the kind of the first taste of how DirectX 12 is going to go and how the industry is going to move. And honestly, while consoles, yes, they're not as powerful as PCs, but in many ways, the the introduction of asynchronous shading with consoles and its um, its pervasiveness, and I don't mean that in a negative way, pervasive can kind of have negative connotations, but the pervasiveness of DirectX 12 and the compute usage rather, we're seeing of next generation titles is filtering down to PC and it's it's a really good thing because it means obviously low level APIs. At the end of the day, consoles, mantle, DirectX 12, it doesn't matter, all we want are the best looking games and I think the industry is moving towards the best options. I, once again, I'm just going to voice my support for Vulkan because I really like the sound of an open source API, which I wouldn't say solves these problems because it really doesn't. You've still got hardware level f functionality that you need to worry about support. But the reason I like Vulkan in some ways is just because you've got that open source nature where you don't have to be so reliant on you know, all X companies not updating the standards so we're boned. Someone else can take up the mantle, if you excuse the pun, and they can carry on the legacy or they can contribute patches and performance and suggestions. And I really like that idea and I like the philosophy of an open an open network, I guess you could say, and that you could develop a game more easily for Linux or your phone or your PC or what have you. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I got a little bit off the beaten topic at the end there, but yeah, that's just how we roll. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. 
do the likey, commenty, subscribe you thing if you've not already. And uh, I appreciate the views and the support and the love. But anyway, thanks again to the person who... Thanks to the person who formed me on this on Facebook. It was really appreciated, Ryan. So take care and bye for now.